2016, and it seems that we are not out of the woods yet. We have another coronal hole turning towards Earth as we speak. Now, not more than 72 hours ago, I mentioned this in one of my other videos that as we were watching the first coronal hole passing by Earth, I noticed on the left side of the video from the SDO that there was another coronal hole that had already formed. And I did mention that there was a very high possibility that this coronal hole would not close and it would be turning towards Earth. Well, I was just catching up on some SDO footage, and lo and behold, this coronal hole has not shrunk in size. It has not gotten any bigger. However, it is turning towards Earth. Now, I'm going to give you a better view of it with this footage, and just so there's no mistake, I'm going to show you right here the SDO uh, website, and this is for public use. Anybody can go here. And you can check this information out for yourself. But we're going to use this pink purplish video because it will give you a better definition of this coronal hole that is turning towards Earth. Right below here is the last 48 hours of the video footage that they have. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And as the image comes up, there she is. It looks rather menacing. And it probably will be. There's no doubt about it. Now, one thing I do want to touch on is over the next few days, and what you're viewing here is a computer model of solar winds measuring plasma density and radio, radial velocity. Now, I know it sounds a lot like a bunch of scientific mumbo jumbo, but in actuality, it's not. And it's very easy to understand the, uh, the visual graphics. As you can see right here, this is planet Earth in this graph. This is a wave of solar wind that is coming our way. Over here, it will measure the plasma density, and below this graph will measure the radial velocity in kilometers, or excuse me, a, a kilo, a kilometers per second. As you can see on the bottom are dates, the 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, of December leading into the 1st and 2nd of January. So as we move into the last day of December and the last day of the year and moving into New Year's Day, we're going to be hit with another solar wind, solar wave, cosmic wave, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be damaging to the Earth. Now, when I say damaging, you know, I'm not referring to the end of the world like all of these other people want to imply or infer, and they like to put words in your mouth. Never once have I said that this will be the end of the world. Never. Not once. However, whenever you're dealing with situations like this, it will increase earthquake activity and volcanic activity across the globe. We are already seeing this earthquake activity and right now, the state of California in the United States, I think, is in very serious danger. Now, we've already seen this starting around midnight last night, right on the border of Nevada and California. And since then, more earthquakes have gone off. And we're going to go ahead and zoom right in here. Now, I was going through some emails about an hour ago, and I was getting emails from people that live in the Nevada area and also the California area that borders Nevada. They were all telling me the same thing, that yes, they did feel this earthquake, and they keep occurring, the aftershocks, in a very widespread area. Now, since we've been monitoring the situation, Another earthquake swarm started to appear in Southern California, not far from Los Angeles. I'm going to go ahead and zoom into the area. Not far from San Bernardino. Seems to be in a mountainous area. And they registered a magnitude 
3.94. And then a swarm of earthquakes, aftershocks hit right after it. Now, what I did notice is in this area, as I zoomed in and just used the satellite, there is someone's house right next to the epicenter of where this earthquake, well, it's updating. Well, even more earthquakes just came in. So I guess we're going to be pretty busy here in the California, Nevada area over the next several days. But what I was trying to show you is right near that magnitude 3.94, oh, probably within 100 yards of the epicenter was a lonely old ranch style house, literally sitting there all by itself. And you can guarantee goddamn tea that they felt that. There's no doubt about it. But you can see these earthquakes are starting to form more frequently all along California's coast, all along the intersections of California, all the way up the coastline. They will definitely start to hit as time goes on. So we will keep an eye on all of the earthquakes that are occurring. They are going to increase. A few hours ago, they had a magnitude 4.7. It was actually downgraded. Uh, it came in a little bit higher than a magnitude 4.7. Um, they had another one 4.8 off the coast of Japan. And down in Papua New Guinea again, magnitude 5.8. Now, one thing I wanted to mention to you, over the last couple of days, they have an active volcano in the Aleutian Islands, Bogoslav Volcano. This volcano did erupt a few days ago, and they had an aviation alert because they didn't want planes flying through it. So I thought I would just go ahead and take a look at where exactly this volcano is. So I punched it into Google Earth, and it's going to go ahead and zoom us right in to the area. And you could see it's a very, very small island. I'm kind of wondering if this island was just not formed by the underwater volcano, which is probably the case. Now, scientists are keeping their eye on this volcano, and from what I've been reading, they have it on red alert, meaning the possibilities of a major eruption are most definitely the case. Now, I'll attach a link directly to this article that lists all the information on Volcano Bogoslav. And if this volcano goes off and this volcano erupts, I can only imagine what we'll be in store for. But we will keep you updated on all of this information. And we're also going to be doing a story on the incoming comet 45P, Honda 45P, which will be coming very, very close to Earth on New Year's Day through on or about February 11th through the 14th. And this will also stir the sun up. We will possibly see a lot of CMEs. And uh, this should be a very interesting time going into the new year for 2017. So if anybody in the earthquake areas of California or Nevada have any testimonials that you'd like to send me in by email, you can send them into Nibiru Planet X 2016 at gmail.com. And I still have a bunch of other emails to go through, but these people are telling me that they are definitely feeling these earthquakes in the eastern part of California, right along the Nevada border. So if you want to tell me about it, drop me an email, and I want to hear what you have to say. Stay tuned. We will have additional information for you in approximately two hours. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Nibiru channel. It is December 28th, 2016, and it seems that we are not out of the woods yet. We have another coronal hole turning towards Earth as we speak. Now, not more than 72 hours ago, I mentioned this in one of my other videos that as we were watching the first coronal hole passing by Earth, I noticed on the left side of the video from the SDO that there was another coronal hole that had already formed. And I did mention that there was a very high possibility that this coronal hole would not close and it would be turning towards Earth. 
Well, I was just catching up on some SDO footage and lo and behold, this coronal hole has not shrunk in size. It has not gotten any bigger. However, it is turning towards earth. Now I'm going to give you a better view of it with this footage. And just so there's no mistake, I'm going to show you right here, the SDO uh, website. And this is for public use. Anybody can go here and you can check this information out for yourself. But we're going to use this pink purplish video because it will give you a better definition of this coronal hole that is turning towards Earth. Right below here is the last.